What's up guys, back with another educational video. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Half you guys that watch these videos aren't even subscribed. Come on, please. What do I have to do? Are you gonna make me beg? Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the videos. Like the video, leave a comment, and just comment for the algorithm. So I know everybody's sick of talking about artificial sweeteners. And here's another video. This comes up because I have been very adamant on my social media that there are no human randomized control trials demonstrating adverse reactions of artificial sweeteners in humans, except one just got published. So contrary to what many of you think, I am actually always trying to disprove what I believe to be true because being wrong about something is actually a beautiful thing because if you're not wrong about anything, if you've already got everything figured out, things are already as good as they can be, like you can't actually improve. So I actually, in a way, in a sick way, I like finding out that I'm wrong. Now, of course, I still read these studies very skeptically. Overall, I thought this was a good study, but I disagree with the author's conclusions based upon the data that they have. So we'll talk about why I disagree. So thus far, most of the studies looking at artificial sweeteners and the human microbiome have been done relatively short term, like seven to 28 days, which actually is typically plenty of time to see changes in the gut microbiota. That tends to respond pretty quickly to diet and lifestyle changes. And so far, there have been, I think, two or three studies, randomized control trials, showing no effect on the gut microbiome. But obviously, there are many different species of bacteria. So in this study, they fed either water as the control or 48 milligrams of sucralose per day to volunteers for 10 weeks. And these were healthy volunteers. And the title of the paper is very sexy. 10 week sucralose consumption induces gut dysbiosis and altered glucose and insulin levels in healthy young adults. Oh, <gasps> our kind was right. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this a little bit. A few things. One, they're using a physiological dose of sucralose, which I like. A lot of these animal studies, they're using super high doses of sucralose that you would never ever use in a human. So this is actually a reasonable dose. So check mark in their corner for that. Two, their power calculations for determining sample size seem to be very, very dead on. They had 20 people in each group was what they expected to need to detect differences between groups in terms of the gut microflora. And then they were also taking measurements of insulin sensitivity and blood glucose as secondary measurements. So the big takeaway from this study for me is they didn't really find much difference at all in anything they measured in this study. So for example, weight, BMI, waist circumference, hip circumference, body fat percentage, HbA1c, HOMA IR, serum insulin, none of those things changed. Actually, there was a slight trend for triglycerides to decrease in the group getting sucralose. Now, it didn't achieve statistical significance, but it was really darn close. It was a P of 0 0.06, and if it was 0 0.05, it would be considered significant. Regardless, it's not really a big effect size on triglycerides, and it could be a data artifact. But most of these measures showed absolutely no difference. Now, when it comes to the stuff that did differ, we're gonna talk about the metabolic stuff first. They pointed out that the oral glucose tolerance test at 10 weeks was different for the group getting sucralose compared to the group getting water. Now, let me explain what an oral glucose tolerance test is. Now, remember, their HOMA IR, their HbA1c, and their serum insulin and glucose were not different between groups and they weren't different from beginning baseline to the end of the study. Those are the most common measures of long-term blood glucose control. I do think an oral glucose tolerance test is a good thing to include because an oral glucose tolerance test basically tests how well your body's own insulin works. So what they do is give 75 grams of glucose and look over the course of about two to three hours at how your insulin and your blood glucose responds to that test. The major takeaway is there was basically no difference. There was no difference between groups for the area under the curve of the oral glucose tolerance test for either glucose or insulin. No difference in area under the curve. To me, that is the big story. There was really no difference. Now that being said, what they really pointed out and highlighted was the one difference there was, was at 30 minutes, post-ingestion, there was a significant difference between the sucralose group and the water group at this one time point. The total area under the curve of this stuff showed 
no difference. They also pointed out that from baseline to 10 weeks, there was an increase in the area under the curve for the group drinking sucralose. And again, if you torture the data enough, it will confess to what you want. Yes, they saw about an 8% increase in the area under the curve from baseline to 10 weeks. But at 10 weeks, once again, there was still no differences between the group getting water and the group getting sucralose. And to me, that is the story. If you wanna pick out one time point that had a difference for like 15 minutes and call that increasing insulin resistance. Okay, then we get into the differences in the gut microflora. Now, once again, the biggest takeaway is they really saw no differences in almost all the bacteria species they tested. The one they did see a difference in, I'm gonna butcher this name, is Blautia cocoides. Any gut microbiome experts, please forgive me. I'm not used to reading out these Latin names. They did see a significant increase in that species of bacteria. What's interesting is just because that species increased doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing. The research is very interesting on Blautia cocoides because there's actually studies, and they pointed this out to their credit, they did point this out, that very recent studies also suggest that sucralose may ameliorate DSS-induced colitis symptoms by improving the intestinal barrier integrity and reducing intestinal inflammation via gut microbiome alteration in mice, again, in mice. When I looked up Blautia cocoides, basically, if you look at people with insulin resistance, they have less of that, not more. In fact, there have been some people who have postulated that increasing that species of bacteria may have positive effects on insulin resistance and obesity. People with obesity and insulin resistance tend to have lower levels of that species of bacteria. I think that's a reach based on correlation data. I'm not sure it matters whatsoever. The story that's being told in this paper to me, and they call it gut dysbiosis, basically just means it changed. It's not explained by the data that's in here because most of the other studies talking about Blaudia cocoides actually show positive effects or potentially positive effects of this species of bacteria on metabolic syndrome and obesity. And these effects appear to be regulated through the production of butyrate, which is one of the volatile fatty acids that this species of bacteria can produce. So again, it just doesn't really make sense that if this is causing increases in insulin, then why do we see people who have insulin resistance have less of this species of bacteria? So I'm not saying that this paper is BS. I'm not saying their data is BS. I'm not saying that at all. I think overall it's a pretty good study. I think their statements about insulin and glucose control and these bacterial species, I think they're making pretty strong speculative statements on pretty thin data. Maybe more studies will come out, we'll understand this stuff better, and maybe I'll be wrong. But based on this study, it is not strong evidence that sucralose has negative effects. Because once again, for the vast majority of things, there was no difference even after 10 weeks. If you wanna, again, pick out one time point that was different, okay. But again, the area under the curve between the groups was no different and every other measure of insulin sensitivity and blood glucose control was absolutely no different. They also didn't bother to point out that triglycerides might have gone down in the sucralose group as well. Interesting they left that part out. Be very careful reading a headline, especially in the mainstream media, and even on a scientific paper. Things like gut dysbiosis and altered glucose and insulin levels sounds very scary, but it really didn't alter blood glucose and insulin levels because their fasting levels were no different. The area under the curve was no different. The HOMA IR was no different and the HbA1c was no different. So in most studies, if you dig deep enough, you can find some kind of difference. It very well may have been a data artifact. Who knows? Hopefully, with more research in the future, we'll find out more information and be able to make better conclusions based on this data. But right now, this is not even moderate evidence. I wouldn't even call it weak evidence. If there's something between no evidence and weak evidence, this is it. That potentially sucralose may have some effect on the gut microbiome. Based on some of this data about Blautia cocoides, it might actually be a good effect. <laughs> so we don't know yet, and we'll need to see more studies. If you guys are interested in the studies I cited in this video, check the links in the description. Also, you can check out our supplement line 
outwork nutrition. Yes, it's sweetened with artificial sweeteners. No, we don't think it's gonna do anything bad to you. It is evidence-based, efficaciously dosed, tastes great at a competitive price point. Pre-workout, recovery product, and whey protein. Highly recommend them. It's what Holly and I use, and we think you guys will like them as well. Links are in the description.